Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your man Testament. Just want to say thank you guys for tuning into the Umbrun House. So today we have Sir Frankster, aka Frank, who's going to be sharing with us his Magrock deck profile. Take it away, Frank. All right. So go ahead and screen share here so that way y'all can just see it in the app. So I, I named it Mr. Consistent because <laughs> I like to be hilarious. So we already know the beautiful man. Yeah. Magrock here. Yes. There's also an Umbran, so Heck you know, yeah, man. got a got a rep Umbran house. Thank you, yeah, man. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. From, from <laughs> I, I think of all the Umbran heroes, he's probably the strongest because he is one of the cross orders. Cross order heroes are they tend to be pretty good. Yeah, he just lasts forever. He's doing so good right now. I, I feel like, especially with the meta, at least at the time of the recording of this video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, first things first is uh, going to be our combos. So, as we go through the combo list here, go ahead and limit it to just combos. Um, for Magrock, he only has access to poison and shadow. So, okay. I'm and his limit it to poison just to, just to show. So, poison, shadow, there's not a whole lot. <laughs> so oh, right, basically yeah. the only other combo you could possibly throw into Magrock are the Living Shadow and Amplification Hex. Those right. really don't work as well. Uh, as and that, what's it called? That combo that adds cards back to your hand too. What's that one called? Go see oh, grass. Oh, yeah, and Grass. Grass is a double uh, double shadow. Yeah, I think it's, it's still a really good card. But when it comes to this deck, you're gonna you're gonna want to run Shroud uh, because of the can attack and increasing damage and healing. Um, oh, okay. So also, if you look at the combos, we have Burst of Venom. Okay. Uh, with Burst of Venom, say uh, you need to kill someone like super quickly, uh, you can remove your Offiscation for an extra two. Ah, cool. And Shroud for an extra game, because those are the only poison buffs that are technically in this build. Okay. Um, then Obfuscation, this and the left two most buffs are basically cemented down. Um, the only way to really get around this is with uh, combos that make everything uh, dormant or Mari Bard, which is the most annoying one. And we got poison spray. Poison spray is especially good in the Magrock v Magrock because oh, man. you'll yeah, wait I till like you you always get me down. I wait till Magrock's down at eleven when I'm playing against another one, and then I'll hit them with the poison spray because they won't heal from steadfast. It'll deal seven, maybe less, depending if they have a uh, mountain fort out or not. But then that reduced three damage or reduced three healing is just like. It's GG for. So, so if you're playing Magrock. against another Magrock, I mean, wouldn't that that uh, what's it called? That Sky Beam go off first, and they would heal heal still before. That's what I said. I wait till they're at 11 before I do that. At 11, you don't heal. Okay. 11. What would happen is they would hit you for one, then you would reduce it by one, so it'd go from eight damage to seven. Right. And then Mountain Forts, uh, but. Minus three healing, they're sitting at uh, gonna be four potentially more than that, but below ten. And having oh, minus okay. three when you do uh, like shroud and to abyss shade, abyss shade only heals three, so it's it's none of that healing's gonna happen whatsoever, uh, and that's what <laughs> kills you right nice. at the end. That's so and dirty. Then, get the, the matchup. Ven <laughs> Venom veins is. <laughs> one of the best cards in this deck in my personal opinion because of how many aggro decks there are oh, super right. aggro like yep. um nine, nine times out of ten if i have this out against a tempus deck they're either gonna just eat the damage and try to kill me or they're they're gonna wait four turns for this to rotate out yeah. which nice. i'm perfectly fine with because then i'm just gonna keep hitting them with my uh tentacles and stuff Dang. Um, and that's for 11, right? The total value of that is like... 
two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eleven. Okay. And then more if they attack you. So right. even if they go to like remove it right away, that's still four damage it dealt for one turn. Right. Which in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot, but overall that's still, you know, enough to possibly win you a game. Right, absolutely. Um, the reason it's called Mr. Consistent is if you look at the list here, you have three of, 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 three of. Three of. Uh, there's only one two of because you have your items and your unruly mob. Um, people have actually told me to take unruly mob out, and I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> unruly mob only allowing your aggro decks to attack once a turn is ridiculous. Right. Um, you run three blacksmith because you want to get an item out as soon as possible. Normally, you go for tome first because of the possible healing and the drawing cards. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, this is the lifeblood of the deck, at least in my personal opinion, because okay. that'll help you heal on your opponent's turn while they're trying to kill you. Okay. Um, and reducing that one damage too. I mean, I've noticed that that just comes in clutch actually a lot. Yeah, uh, being able to. So, what's really funny is if you're at five life with Magrock, and someone goes to hit you for six damage, you actually will plus almost two health off of them doing that because uh, they'll attack you. They'll get hit with the steadfast. You'll go from five to seven then yep. the six will happen but you'll reduce it down to five so you're actually up to two health <laughs> versus wow. they took a damage and potent because a lot of the people that i play against use scrap work spruisers so they take three damage total all right versus them dealing four to you and it's just like yeah i'll take that trade nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool Heck yeah. Uh, shadow Puppets. Like, really ridiculous. Alright, go ahead. Uh, sh shadow Puppets because they're the guaranteed removal for Madrock. Yep. Uh, because they're one of his core uh, colors. Uh, some people do throw in Crystal Leeches because you do run Crystal Core. To, yep. uh, to not die from a combo right at the end. Um, I originally ran a crystal core in the de or in a uh, crystal leech in the deck mm -hmm. to have a fourth removal but it ended up slowing me down against aggro decks yeah uh nitro hammer is the best card for this deck ever i don't care what anyone <laughs> says it's so good i'm sure Especially, i'm gonna see the comment section below now <laughs> it's just like nah bro that card's trash no i love it um giving the guaranteed three damage off sure i'll take sometimes you got to take the one like if you don't have a steadfast out or a mountain fort out but sometimes you can actually heal by doing that so so if i may ask so when nitro hammer hits your hits yourself when he hits you for that one and you have uh those steadfast beacons that reduces your own attacks as well the damage you do to yourself yes. because of the the wording it says reduce damage received from attacks it does not say from opponent or target so it's all attacks and nitro hammer is an attack ability uh, that's pretty cool <laughs> that's that's where the wording in the game gets um, a little more so uh, construed like you gotta actually like read the card right um i know a lot of us oracles have to make like callings on that all the time but that's why we have Tayson because Tayson's are <laughs> um, um, that... Threadling to consistently bring back cards that you need um, I actually because I was waiting for us to do our interview uh, I did I did a uh, Dreadling uh, note card so like what's the top priority to bring back ah, cool. with them so uh, the top priority is going to be items and tentacles. Then the next priority is going to be steadfast beacons and assassins. And then the last priority, if you really need them to bring out like crystal cores again, is blacksmiths. Okay. Those those are the top five cards you would bring back with Necro Dreadling. Um, 
specifically in that order always bring your items back into your deck if you really need them or your uh your tentacles because your tentacles are going to be your main damage dealers ah okay all right um so mountain fort because why not it's a damage reduction it's not one that's going to rotate out like uh moss armor or uh bubble fishes ah okay right um Dust Talon Assassin is a really good card for the simple fact that if someone Creeble monks you, you can still trigger abilities with this card, which is why it's in the deck. Yeah. Um, Dusk Glade Tome for the healing and the draw power. Yep. I accidentally hit home. Then we also have Crystal Core, because, you know, Crystal Gang, all day, every day. <laughs> Oh, they are <laughs> Uh Colossi Idols, you definitely want to play more in your favor than your opponent's favor. Yep. Um, one thing I really like to do is uh, if I know I'm going to Shroud next turn, or if I Shroud the very next turn, if I have a Colossi Idol in my hand, I put one on top. So that way, if they didn't do anything to me, they can't use a combo to remove my entire board because I've had that happen to me. Like, oh man, yeah, that sounds annoying. Um, tentacles, because tentacles are broken. Uh, being able to gain additional abilities and have the ability to deal damage every single turn for chip damage. Uh, they do two by themselves or four with Shroud out. Right. Which is just ridiculous. This is probably one of the best cards of the game right now, at least in my personal opinion. Uh, if you have another shadow buff in play, it draws you a card, which can be very beneficial. That can draw you into, like when we play tested, I don't know if you remember, none of my items were equipped, nothing. I abishated to draw a card, drew into a blacksmith, put my tome on, and then the game changed from there. Thank <laughs> you, dude. And then Abyss Shade's one of the most special cards, at least in my opinion, because uh, dealing damage to your target and healing for the rotated mount. It might only be one, but in Magrock, it matters. Chip damage oh, yeah. matters. I've been at two health with an Abyss Shade um, and triggered it. So it hits for one, you would go from three to five and then it would heal you again for its actual heal. Right. So you go up, you heal three potentially, and then normally I'm triggering Tome with that. So Tome will trigger to give me seven and I draw a card. So, so how much do you heal essentially? That's four then, just, right? Yeah, just with one Abyss Shade out and Tome. That's like with no uh, tentacles or anything else out. So uh, being right. able to heal four with just one card, doing one, one, yeah, it's just like, it's ridiculous. Okay. And with Shroud, it deals three damage and three healing. So it's giving you the potential difference of six points of health That's just by nice. one card. Yeah, it like lasts forever, I feel like. Sheesh. And if you're <laughs> below 10, it's going to heal you two as well. So it's technically going to be eight point difference of health. Right. And it's just like that's just one one card that's triggered. <laughs> but that's the deck. Um it's it saw some changes after the Boston tournament. Um oh. which I won't take credit for the changes. That's all Tetra. Uh -huh. Um the main difference that made a very big game changer in Boston is Shroud. Um okay. and the build that I took to Boston I ran Shadowy Grass instead. Oh, yeah. Or Ghostly Grass. I call it Shadowy Grass. It's all good. <laughs> we all know what the card is. Um, I, I wanted the more recursion of the deck versus the damage output. Yeah. But really, after playing against Mumbles, uh, he ran Shroud. That's, that's literally the only combo difference between the two Magrocks. Okay. And Shroud was just too good. Like, not being able to attack uh, hurts you because you can't activate your assassins because they're attack cards. Yeah. Um, and you can't activate your nitro hammer, so you you have to rely strictly on spending your turn activating tome to potentially do something. Dang. And even even with that happening, that doesn't even help sometimes because 
then you sideboard uh like your gurgling oozes in against another magrock and it's just like it's the magrock being magrock is disgusting (laughs) oh man that's terrible this card that's why i don't know if you can see my my emblem but uh, I I did it because it's dirty. It's a dirty card. I love that card so much. That was that was my most favorite card when I first started playing Light Sea because I used to run it with Grimace a lot, and so uh, and I just loved playing Storm like the most, like against Storm using that because that completely shuts down their buff removal. A yeah. lot of Storm has his buffs too. Like man, crazy. Yeah. That's the main thing with that that card is just like. You can think of so many decks that get affected by it. Like yeah. playing it against, say, Arkmoss. Arkmoss's entire thing is having more buffs on board than you. And right. then you're going to go, oh, you can't play buffs at all. Yeah. And then right as it's about to rotate out, as soon as it rotates out, you play another one. <laughs> and oh, then you dude, play yeah. another one. And I That's love you nine turns here as well, just to freaking get it right back out of the, the discard pile and then play it again. I love that. Especially um, like. Uh, it's a poison card that uh, adds one. Uh, I mean, not a poison card. It's a death card that adds one poison action card to it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that card's pretty sweet, though. I love that card. I love the smiling face. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, dude. I know, Mag- <laughs> this Magrock build might be seeing uh, a little action from uh, this beautiful guy right here. Heck yeah. Make, no, it, no, make it a fully that. purple hero. Being able to have access to every single uh, combo, yeah, that purple has like this. Even this this simple one, devour soul, can be a game changer. Yeah, that card's pretty crazy. This card's my one of my favorite ones, the double death. Yeah, because you can just heal for like stupid amounts with it. <laughs> Sweet. Oh man, nice. Well, awesome, cool. Well, thank you, Frank. Um, I really appreciate you doing the deck profile, man. It, it means a lot. Thank you for doing that for the channel, dude. And Magrock is freaking awesome. I mean, he's one of my favorite Umbrans too. Although I hate playing against him, like I just <laughs> love the Umbran uh, himself as a, as a character. He's freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, dude, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, that was Sir Frankster with the Magrock deck profile. If you guys are new to the channel, just hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more from the Umbran House. Take care, y'all. Does that only contain cards from this set or will it just instantly like c- include random More, no more than likely it won't. <laughs> no, it- hey! <laughs> I got to record it too. What the- Wow, bro! What are the chances of that, yo? That that just shows you, man. Sorry <laughs> for that. Are you kidding me? It's oh, just like man. casual. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, so I just figured we can go ahead and do like a couple matches or a match at least with uh, Frank's Magrock. He's going to be piloting it and just showing us just some of the plays and, uh, you know, just the pacing of the deck and whatnot, depending on the matchup. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we don't play against a blue. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, give me give me tech all day. I love I love my tech matchup. My screen that you have? Yeah, if you can move that out of the way. <laughs> Because I believe that will show up in the video. I'll move you over there because then I can still check yep. his. Yeah. Sweet. So a tentacle is right out. Uh, I put tentacle out normally uh, because I, I'm going to need it to start playing other cards. Oof. Um, this card's super annoying when, uh, when it starts going off because people can... I, I know exactly what he's going to do with this card. <laughs> so he's going to wait till he hits 11, then bounce it back to his hand with this. Right, yeah. Card. So for me, whenever I always have like a tentacle right at the start and I have no way to trigger it, I get nervous about just throwing it out there because I'm just waiting for people to just freaking remove it right away. And then I'm just like, I don't know. Like I want to aggro the buff removal at the same time. I don't want to lose it at the same time. Yeah. That kind of sucks. So... Shane, poison spray, not the greatest. Um, 
So, of the five, I'm trying to think because he has superiority in uh, time, so he could potentially rotate it forward once. Right, next turn he could rotate it and then just bounce it back. I'll I'll put that out just to be safe. Because I I feel like that's what's going to happen. He's going to rotate it forward and then bounce it back, like you were saying. Because that's what. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so let's uh let's go ahead and shadow puppet. <laughs> he just ate all that damage too for nothing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There we go. There's the man, the myth, the legend. Bam. Blacksmith. And now crap is going to start happening. Now I'm going to start being able to draw consistently. Of course. Of course, Ramparts. <laughs> I've seen this player around too, actually. He Keep always on, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I haven't played him a whole lot. Um, I know I've been playing against... Uh, Red Flash, I think, and he's been playing Magrock, and okay. I've won almost every single time we've played. But I, one thing is, as a Magrock, or as someone that plays Magrock a lot, I literally play Magrock a lot. That's, That's a like all you play, right? That's like you're like one of your only decks that you have, right? That was actually really good on his part. I didn't expect the overwhelming blast. Um, just all my items want to come to my hand. That's cool. Just equipped it. Um, I don't have to worry about items for the rest of the game, for the most part, until I probably hit about 15 or so. Yeah. Um, just as a general for it. I'm gonna just pass because he has the ramparts out. Oh man, beautiful card right here. Oh, I don't have any. Thing. No, you could oh. you could play it now if you wanted, but it would only. I don't have a steadfast beacon to protect with it. Um, oh. So for me, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and trigger tome because uh, calculating it, this is gonna heal me one. My other one's gonna heal me one, and then this and Tome's gonna heal me one. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> right, because it's 20 or less, so damn, yep. got a 21, nice. Wow, and you got rid of a lot of that freaking clunky buff that he had there, too. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, um, so he's gonna draw a card, but uh, just let's go ahead and do more damage to him. I'll throw, I'll throw Assassin out there. I'll let him draw the one card. But he's about to eat some damage. Oh, that's right. You have freaking nitro hammer. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind if I I clunk out my mountain fort because I do have another one in hand right now. How much damage is that one? Dang. Uh, two, three, four, seven. You know, that's that's the thing that I I love and hate about Magrock is that the damage that he deals is so deceptive. Like, all you see is a, is a Abyss Tentacle and a couple, you know, ones on the field, you know, with the Abyss shape. That's all you see. But then when it's like when he triggers and it all goes off, it's like, dang, like, what the <laughs> You didn't put... I'm That's sorry. That, that makes me man. laugh. Because it's <laughs> yeah. like, literally my entire deck does chip damage to you, but you're still going to play that card out. That's not going to do anything for you. Yikes. And I don't I don't want him to heal, so we'll keep going in with that. Dang, even still. Oh man, yeah, and then look at that. You just hit the three. Now that's five, six. He's at he'll be at uh seven. Seven and then you hit for another three. That's that's the damage you just did in one turn. And wow. if he if he doesn't heal, I'll kill him with poison spray. Dude, that's so savage. And man, I that just like blows my and mind. And now I only have a I only have the tentacle I started the game without again. Dang. <laughs> that's game and if he doesn't heal. Just stand and draw a card. There that's... you go. <laughs> I figured that was gonna happen. He ain't going out without a fight. It's okay. While he can't reduce damage, I'll hit him for eight. He's gonna deal two damage to himself now too. 
So you'll actually be able to swing again, actually, if he doesn't do anything next turn. Just, oh, wow, dude. Yeah, man. Another assassin. Oh, man. That's so ridiculous. Ah, oh, that's so savage. And now, even if he does Tyrex Fixer again? Yeah. You know what's interesting? In the lore chat that I have with, uh, with Alan, he talks about how Magrock, you know, potentially could be very deceptive. I mean, as any Umbrian can be, but I see him. Even just his play style, the damage that he deals really is so deceptive. Like, man, you don't expect to get hit that hard, and then you do. Yeah. It, <laughs> like, Dang, five man. damage, six damage, seven damage. Like, it's all just little bits of damage, but it's like, it, it wins you games. Jeez. People don't realize how easy it is to win. And I didn't even play Shroud that game. Yeah, dude. And Shroud's, oh Shroud's the the main thing with that deck is yeah, dude. additional damage, additional healing. Right, and you can't... I, I didn't start with a very good hand, but Magrock uh, blesses me sometimes. And he's like... <laughs> It's like, here's your blacksmith that you've been waiting for. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But even with the Abyss Shades, like, just being able to get that extra draw, too, just to, you know, pull through your deck a little more, that's still pretty sweet, man. And then with the Duskglade Tomb, I believe it's called, Duskglade Tomb, Duskglade Tomb, yeah, like, that thing is, like, it's, it's just legit. It's so simple because you're just drawing a card and healing if you're below 20. But, I mean, just having the Abyss Shades, the freaking Abyss Weaver in there, the Abyss Tentacles, like, that is just, like monstrous with how much damage you're doing and then just triggering your nitro hammer and then doing it all over again it's like what the flip is happening like, oh, and what's man. really funny is with the assassin you can so say you're gonna use tome with your assassin yeah. so your tome technically still did three damage and you draw a card and then you can activate hammer regularly to do it all over again Oh man, dude, that's just freaking crazy, dude. Oh, there's just so much chip damage, and that's what I really love about Magrock is yeah. he's not going to be like, oh, hit you for 14 for game. He's like, right. no, I'm going to slowly build up and slowly take you down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You swung for 10 in one of those things, man. I mean, just with the uh, Dust Town Assassin, you swung pretty hard. I mean, that's a third of their health that you just hit with one thing. That's not including you just... If that was the second time you triggered it. You know what I mean? If you would have hit with the freaking Nitro Hammer and then did all that too, I mean, I think it was about maybe like, I don't know, 15 damage you would have done in that one turn. Like, that's just yeah. pretty... Yeah. Thank you, Frank, for uh, demoing the deck. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, if this is your first time, uh, if anything, just uh, feel free to subscribe and hit that like button, and uh, we will see you guys in a bit. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Umbran House.